please, wait! I rushed to catch up to the boys. Watson looked around, unsure of where my voice was coming from before smiling when he saw me. Emily! Where were you? I was worried after you disappeared. I I'm terribly sorry about that. I had to let my butler know what I was doing. Butler? Ah, oh, I suppose anyone invited to a party as fancy as that would have a butler or two. For the briefest moment, it felt as though he saw me by my class. Right then. This is the way. She must be on her way to Hyde Park. Watson and I followed so as not to be left behind. We're lucky that Hyde Park is so open compared to the rest of the city. Hardly any blind spots for us to overlook. Now here's a clue. This insect's carcass looks to have been damaged by some sharp claws. A cat, I would guess. But it's most likely the work of a stray, isn't it? No. The strays in London are natural hunters that can take down their prey quickly, but this particular cat had a hard time of it. One can deduce, then, that it is not used to hunting. Which points only to Chelsea. I would say so, yes. It hasn't been that long since she escaped, but she must be aware we're out searching for her. Watson muttered whilst tracking Chelsea's steps. What makes you think that? Even if a pet's been kept its entire life, the moment it steps outside, instinct kicks in. That and a cat's hearing is four times that of a human's. Chelsea's had to have heard us following her. My! You know a lot about animals, Watson. You noticed. I do rather like them, and they seem just as fond of... Mm-hmm. It just means we need to take care not to disturb her. Let's move on. Without another word, Holmes swiftly left us. Wait, Holmes! There it is again. He doesn't have to sulk every time. Is he? I didn't notice anything different. That night, couldn't recall anything we said that would bother him. You'll see what I mean after some more time with him. Now let's follow him. Uh, all right. Holmes advanced and ruminated, mindful of nothing as a whole, whilst being simultaneously very observant of everything, until the trail was disrupted by scattered, muddy patterns of paw prints. They're over here, too. But look at them, I can't find a single proper trail leading anywhere. With how sporadic these steps are, it's impossible for her to run at top speed. She must be stopping and going at random. It could be she's panicking and she knows we aren't far behind. The steps face towards the north end of the park. You're right. Let's see if she's over there. Before that, I wish to expand upon Watson's unparalleled knowledge of felines. It was the same clip tone he used before moving ahead. Come off it, Holmes. No harm in me showing off a bit. You don't have to steal my thunder each and every time. Steal your thunder, you say? Huh. How queer. Is that what you call tripping over yourself to please a simpleton like her? The retort was so natural that I almost didn't understand what he said. Almost. Th that's just awful! Me? A simpleton? And what's this about tripping myself? We both know I'm a lot better on my feet than you. Stop talking over each other all at once. It's getting on my nerves. He forced past the issue he started by returning to the mystery at hand, the insult already long gone from his mind. It's believed that just one year for a cat is equivalent to 17 human years. Then Chelsea would be close to our own ages? Even so, a cat's intelligence is only at the level of a two- or three-year-old, right? So she couldn't outsmart us. Most would think that, and yet it is very much possible. Why, you ask? Cats are skilled hunters with both keen instincts and exceptionally capable builds. At any time, we could be thrown off her trail. So stay focused. We'll need all of our wits about us if we hope to find her before it's too late. It was a tone of indifference that spoke of routine work, but there was something else as well. An urgency that was overshadowed by his lack of expression. Not to worry, Holmes. If worse comes to worse, I'll grab her tail and- How could you, Watson? 
You shouldn't grab the poor thing's tail. It's one thing to set about a scoundrel during a fight, but you ought to reconsider hurting the queen's cat. Y you do have a point. Don't know what I was thinking. Watson stood there, sleeves rolled up and ready to go on the offensive, before Holmes and I stopped him. As he let his arm drop in defeat, Holmes' attention shifted. Watson was quick to notice. Wait! I see. Now it all makes sense. What is it, Holmes? Look, the paw prints disappear right here. After that, nothing. I looked where he pointed. You're right. But where did she go? There isn't a tree she can climb close by. Even if she could jump a long distance, I don't see any sort of gap between prints. What do you make of it, Holmes? She backtracked. Went backwards by following the very path she created. You're saying she's carefully stepping into every one of her own paw prints. Backwards. Can a cat do something so precise? If what's illustrated here is to be believed, yes. And once done, she can continue somewhere that would disguise her whereabouts better, like a patch of grass. It is but one of many tactics an animal will use to escape its predators. Chelsea is a pet, but when push comes to shove, even she can draw from her natural feline instincts to deceive her adversaries. She must have wanted to get away at any cost. I didn't think anyone could hate Her Majesty so much. I think hate is a strong word for it. She's simply not the most attached yet. Not that your interpretation is of any importance. The cold truth is that Chelsea ran away from the Queen. At least the truth wasn't as cold as Holmes. But It matters not if she hates the Queen. The point I'm making is... All living things will act on their natural instincts the moment the situation calls for it. Much like this. Uh, Home suddenly had his oncoming, oncoming fist mere centimeters from my nose. I stepped back before he could strike. What? What on earth? Holmes, you can't do that to a girl. Slow-witted as she is, she moved without a second thought to avoid the danger. I see your point. I wasn't thinking much at all when I moved. And you say Chelsea would adopt those same instincts. Oh, Emily, you're too sweet for your own good. Point proven, yes, but you nearly hit a young lady in the process. You won't be earning high marks for chivalry anytime soon. Experience is the best teacher. The two of you should be thanking me. If it helps you sleep at night. Oh... In any case, cats are capable of speeds up to 50 kilometers per hour. Quite a bit faster than the world record for humans, which means we can never beat them. Think, Holmes! There must be a way. What have I missed? For the first time, his face was pinched visibly with frustration. Where did she jump from, and where did she land? If it were on dead leaves, there would, of course, be no trail to follow. We cannot simply retrace our steps and hope to stumble upon something. That gives her too much time to escape. What should we do? Holmes? Holmes, Watson, do you, do you two have a moment? I gingerly spoke to avoid further irritating him. I can't say for certain that this will work, but I have an idea. Really, Emily? Out with it. What if we were to call out to her? Bring her to us. Miss Whiteley, what are you going on about? Ah! Oh, there he is. He's just arrived. Over here, Pendleton! The sound of a carriage rattled from behind us. My lady, I apologize for keeping you. He quickly stepped down from the carriage. Pendleton! Were you able to find any? Indeed, I was. I brought as much as I could carry. Thank you. If you would, then, please light them. Right away, my lady. Pendleton went to work burning the plant. I don't understand. Is this part of your plan? These are silver vines. They are plants one would find in Asia. I'd ask Pendleton to cut some stems off the ones we grow in our garden. Is that all right? To, um, 
snip away at one of your precious plants. A merchant from the east presented them to me, but this is an emergency. No time to fret over such things. The stems and leaves caught fire one by one and a stream of smoke billowed. Are you daft? You can't burn anything in the park, plants or otherwise. It's prohibited. With circumstances as they are, you will have to forgive me. Pendleton kept burning at a steady pace to keep the fire under his control. My hopes were soon rewarded when, slowly, a curious cat approached from a nearby bush. It mewed as it edged closer, entranced by the rising smoke. What on... wait. This is... <laughs> oh... I never noticed the cat that's like hanging on to uh, to Watson's shirt here. That is so cute! <laughs> it's got hearts in its eyes! Oh, stop. Adorable. Now you see, the aroma this plant gives off attracts cats. Its scientific name is Actinidia polygamma, but most know it better as cat powder. It's a favorite of theirs, in fact. They can't get enough of the smell. Would you look at that? The cats are coming in from all directions. Oh, thank God it worked. I didn't know if it would, if I'm being honest. I've only heard that it's particularly effective against male cats. Let's hope Chelsea is the exception. Gentle mewing could be heard here and there. As time passed, however, gentle turned to emphatic, and here and there turned into everywhere. Then, to our astoundment, the situation took an even more unusual turn. What's wrong with them? Is this normal? They're dancing like they've gone mad. What is this? Well, the plant's very effective at attracting cats, but its scent has the same effect on them as alcohol does on humans. They're drunk, so to speak. How about that? So that's why they're so loose and rolling about. Watson picked up a cat affectionately rubbing against his legs. It will take time, but they'll be sober again soon enough. And now we have an entirely new conundrum on our hands. If we find Chelsea now, she'll be in no condition to attend the ceremony. Holmes tried to pet a cat also, but it rejected him in favor of Watson. Ooh. <laughs> Did you consider what would happen in the event we presented a drunken cat to the Queen? It's alright. Once we spot Chelsea, we'll extinguish the fire and take her away from here. That way, we'll have caught her, and she'll only be a touch drunk. Hopefully. And if we fail? Let's not worry about the ifs, ands, or buts until we've tried and tried again. Now's the time to focus on finding and catching her. As a last resort, do I have your permission to use a sedative? Mm. If that's our very last option, then yes. I'll allow it. And who exactly is allowing you to allow that in the first place? You know, Holmes, you would do well to keep quiet every now and again. You're the one who needs to keep quiet. Oh, look there. Doesn't that Siamese have a gold collar with a jewel? Watson was the first to see the new cat approaching. A gold collar and a white tail. That must be Chelsea. We did it! Here, kitty kitty! This way! Chelsea was staggering, but she was too tempted by the smell in the air to resist. I carefully opened my arm so as not to frighten her, and... Caught her! Got you, Chelsea! <laughs> you had us worried, you naughty girl! We really did it! And we got the collar back to boot! More and more cats were poking their heads from bushes and hiding places completely surrounding us. Let's return to the palace. I pray we're in time for the ceremony. We met with the inspector, who was coming from the opposite end of the park. What are you doing over here? He was at a loss by the sight of burning plants and the mass invasion of cats. He stared, eyes and mouth wide open. Thankfully, what caught him most was the cat nestled in my arms. There she is! My good man, did you really catch Chelsea? Yes, as you can plainly see. To be precise, she would be the one who caught the cat. He pouted as he forced the confession. That's so! She's really something! Well, no time to waste. Let's return her to Her Majesty straight away. 
Then, Pendleton, we'd best be on our way. Of course. I'm dreadfully sorry to ask this of Scotland Yard, but would you be willing to put out the fire? Yes, sir. Would be our pleasure to handle it. Salute to Chelsea! All the officers present rushed before the carriage to give a proper salute. <laughs> it feels nice to have Scotland Yard saluting us, doesn't it? I'm afraid that would be for the royal cat, not for you. I know that! I wasn't letting it go to my head. We set off in the carriage. The entire time, Chelsea was more than happy to stay curled in my lap. She was certainly a funny one, wasn't she? I don't care. The case has been solved. It's time to go home. Home? What about the party? You don't want to see the ceremony? If you want to go, then you may do so alone. We were consulted and the cat was caught. Nothing else matters. No need to be so curt, my dear friend. But I have to wonder, is she really a girl of the nobility? I never got that impression when we were with her. Well, she looks as vacant as the next, but with such a frightfully aggressive personality, I'll give you that she is far from an ordinary noblewoman. Do you suppose she was brought up training in the mountains? Uh, Holmes? I mean she doesn't have that air of being better than us. She's kind. She wasn't concerned with formalities, said that we could speak as we like with her. And it helps that she's so pretty, too. Ha. Huh. Look at you. You've been bewitched by those innocent doe eyes, haven't you? Me? Bewitched? I've changed my mind. We shall go back to Buckingham Palace. I'm curious to see if she's nibbling away at the food as we speak. What? Wait now! Holmes! It brings me great pleasure to see you all gathered here today. May our fair British Empire be forever blessed. And may we take this opportunity to deepen relations with our loved ones. The ceremony had already started by the time we arrived. The figure of Her Majesty, smiling in all her natural grace, lighted the entire room. The band carried on with the same energy, playing a jovial tune whilst the crowd applauded to her speech. Her Majesty's wandering eyes then found me among the guests. I was being escorted by Scotland Yard. Her wonderful smile broadened. Now, if I may, I should like to introduce a very pretty friend of mine. Uh. I took a deep, deep breath, then apprehensively stepped onto the stage with Chelsea. Your Majesty, we've brought Chelsea home to you. I was right to have faith in you. Thank you, Emily. She winked playfully, then held Chelsea before the King of Siam. He merely observed her at first, but soon his eyes narrowed in approval, and he stroked Chelsea's fur with the tenderness of one caring for his own. Siamese are akin to walking jewels to my people. It has become clear to me today that Chelsea has been raised with all the love you have in your heart to give, and it is thanks to your love that she has become the happiest, most striking jewel in the world. Your Majesty Queen Victoria, may both our countries achieve eternal friendship and prosperity. They are my dearest hopes as well. Her Majesty took the hand of the King and the guests erupted in applause. The golden collar around Chelsea's neck shimmered with all the purity of a years-long bond. Today would be a day to remember, both for myself and for relations between our two countries. Ah! Oops. I forgot! Chelsea's still intoxicated! Poor thing's lost all focus. Nothing will happen, will it? The guests shouldn't be able to tell the difference when they're so far away. I hope. What a mess. It's painfully obvious something is wrong with the thing. Huh? Really? I can't tell from here. I can't watch this anymore. She's worse off than some drunkard at a pub. We ought to pray the king has poor eyesight. Details! Details! Chelsea is safe, and that's the best we could ask for. That may be so, but I would have preferred a more elegant method of ensuring her safety. 
Her methods must have intrigued you at the very least. You wouldn't have come back here otherwise. Did you say something? Huh. <laughs> Not a word. I heard from the palace the very next day. Look, Pendleton! There's an article about yesterday's party! I know the one. I read it this morning. You must be very pleased to have made it in that photograph. I am! But I'm a little embarrassed, too, in a way. So many people are going to read this, and the photo is massive! It certainly is. I was right to lace your corset tighter than usual. Not that again! You make it sound as if I've lost my figure entirely. We ought to clip and cherish this as your most precious memory. And now you make it sound as if my life will only get worse from here. Oh, that's right. My lady, a messenger of the royal families came here to deliver this letter to you. From the royal family? Can you read it aloud? It would be my pleasure. Dear Emily Whiteley, I must thank you once more for finding my dearest Chelsea, but beyond thanks, I feel the need to further express my gratitude. If time allows it, please come to Buckingham Palace at three o'clock today. Her Majesty the Queen Victoria. Oh my! Do you see this? Shall I go? Naturally you shall. I'll have the carriage ready immediately. I'd hoped you would come, Emily. Oh, I would never turn it down! I have heard the details regarding yesterday from Scotland Yard. Chelsea is home, and now that the ceremony is behind us, I wish to personally recognize your role in bringing her back to me. Again, you have my heartfelt thanks. Not at all. It was an honor to be of service, Your Majesty. And with that said, it pleases me to present to you, Emily, this recommendation letter to Harrington Academy. Do pay the headmaster a visit if circumstances permit. I was taken aback by her words. I never expected anything like this. The Harrington Academy? Why, the only one that comes to mind is known for its detectives from all across the country. Indeed, that would be the one. But I must object! I've never thought of myself as a detective. And it would surely raise a scandal, a, a scandal, a, a scandal. And it would surely raise a scandal for a lady to attend a private school. Would it? They are few in number, but there are other ladies in attendance. Despite my doubts, Her Majesty's smile did not falter. In truth, I believe it will soon become commonplace for women to attend school and guide their own futures. But I've been living in the countryside until now. I can't say I know the ways of the world as a student would. I've learned a variety of subjects from my butler and studied those as necessary, but... But I've never been to a school. Can I really attend school? It is my earnest wish that you do. Your mother was once granted the same opportunity as it happens. Truly? My mother was a student? Indeed. She was bright, but ever so humble. Teachers and schoolmates alike adored her. I would always come to her when I felt troubled, and never once did she hesitate to extend her hand to me. I had no idea of any of this. I'm still in shock you knew Mother so well. <laughs> if I may, permit me to gift you this ring. Both my name and yours are engraved along its inner band. As she handed the ring to me, I couldn't help but be captivated by its brilliant polish. Forgive me for asking, but is this your majesty's? I have heard those who possess it are recognized as detectives under your name, but I've never seen it before. Never? Oh, but I'm almost certain you've seen it before. Have I? You will know the answer in time. For now, remember that with this ring, all doors in London will be open to you, and all assistance at your fingertips. I gave the same ring to Holmes Jr. He has also become one of my most trusted detectives. Deservedly so, I would say. And there are more young detectives with this ring still at the Academy. It warms my soul to see you now among them. I'm honored beyond words. Thank you. 
I squeeze the ring tightly in the palm of my hand. I couldn't bear the thought of losing it. I do fear I've yet to truly earn this wonderful gift, but that motivates me to feel worthy all the more. You needn't be so nervous, Emily. You have ambition, creativity, and flexibility. All the makings of a detective. The only thing left to do is help those who would depend on your wit and courage. My faith is yours to keep. Thank you dearly, your majesty. I won't let you down. I swear it! I picked up my skirt and curtsied. An unexpected mystery I stumbled upon paved way to meeting new, exciting people and opportunities. This would be the start of my days at the prestigious Harrington, Harrington Academy. To be continued. All right, now we're into the prologue and out of the prologue's prologue. Whiteley in Wonderland. Okay, so you're gonna quiz me, right, boy? So, we are going to save right here. Pendleton's quiz. We can skip through this. There's a couple of different choices I will make, um, but that's a little later in the questionnaire. Um, I'm all right. Thank you. Um, it was the second witness, if I recall. Yes. Um, A was the one that was different. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, what's next? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the jewel one that I completely failed the math on. It's one. Okay, this is where it gets different. So I'd give it to the child. The case does not come first this time, but rather fellow feeling. You choose to help the boy who is suffering before your eyes. I respect your kindness. Yet it must be asked, what if that money were meant to save another? Someone else is now paying the ultimate price for your decision. Consider every outcome well in advance before acting on your emotions. Alright, next. I'd flee the country with him, of course. Hmm. You've chosen to live forever with the one you love, have you? I wish I could pray such conviction. But personally, I hope such a day never comes. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Okay. Where are we? I don't want to skip too far. Okay, we can go until we go to school. Oh, that was our dream. Where's the milk way? Okay, we're late for school, so this takes a while. Don't want to skip too far ahead. Okay, running now. I gotta get to the school. Oh. Okay. I'm a little bit over, but that's okay. Okay, I missed one thing of Watson's. I was reminded of the party again this morning. Oh, that dull thing. No, no, don't say that. Her majesty was radiant, and the party was fun. I find the word fun in relation to the Queen's affair to be debatable. The case itself was unique enough, I will admit. Now you were saying. I saw that girl we met in the paper. Emily. She was so pretty, wasn't she? You couldn't forget anyone that pretty. I know what you're doing. I don't give a damn about women and you know it. Come on! We both know you went back to the party because you found her curious. Did you say something, Watson? Me? Never. But really, are you so intent to fight off half the world's population that you would deny any woman's worth? And are you so intent to blindly kiss the ground a lot of them walk? Sounds like a fantastic way to contract illness. Our country's men have a duty to behave justly towards women. For what reason would a fine gentleman like yourself turn his back on his duty? Is it because Emily solved the case first that you're irritated? Aha! I know! 
She's irritated you because you fancy a certain older woman rather than any woman, don't you? In the future, leave the queen out of your fantasies and the detective work to me. I am plenty aware of ladies first being front and center in our society, for the record, as well as the proper etiquette required of a gentleman towards a lady in official ceremonies. You know precisely how to give me a fine bloody headache, my friend. If the head does not ache, then it speaks common sense, and my head is clear. You just said how yours feels. So I did. Let's leave it at that. Oops, the teacher is coming. Good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. McKenzie. A wonderful greeting. May you greet our new friend with the same enthusiasm. Come in, young lady. Thank you. I delivered myself to the academy with song, happiness abound, but still I was overcome by a timidness standing in its halls. This feeling became worse having seen, seen the faces of those who would be my schoolmates, for each one appeared well acquainted with their academics. They struck me as smart, capable, and I was reminded that I was far too fresh by comparison. They watched me as I watched them, and they whispered feedback behind cupped hands. Hmm. Oh, it's you! You're... Is something wrong? Have you two met before? We have not. I've never even seen her before. How can you say that? We just met the other day. Here I was, relieved to see someone I recognized. How can anyone be so unkind? Ahem. Class, this here is your newest classmate in the Sixth Form Detectives course, Emily Whiteley. She has been studying under a private tutor till now, so this is her first day attending a school. I would ask that you help her adjust and get comfortable. Now then, I believe there's an empty seat next to Mr. Holmes. You may sit there. Excuse me, sir, but that seat is Bernard's. He is absent today, but what about tomorrow? Is there no other place for her? It's all right. You see, he was run over by five carriages this morning and had to take an extended leave of absence. The poor boy. Still don't know how he's alive. I have to wonder how he survived. Whilst I seated myself, I felt a friendly pat on my shoulder. Emily! Can't believe you've come here! Oh! Watson! I thought you were studying to become a doctor like your father. I hadn't realized you were a detective as well. My dad is a doctor, yes, but I'm Holmes's assistant. Some might say that makes me something of a trainee detective. And I would. At any rate, I'm pleased we've become schoolmates. And the same to you, Holmes. Bah. The boy submitted the briefest of glances before dismissing me entirely. Have I caused him offense? <laughs> Holmes is always like this. He's a good man at heart, just a bit more particular than most. You'll be getting on like old friends soon enough. In fact, he was just telling me how pretty he thought you were before you walked in the classroom. Watson, isn't that what you said? Easy, easy, don't give me that look. All right, enough talk. Everyone's brought in their deposit for the graduation trip, yes. Slater, would you go collect them? And if anyone did forget, just remind them to bring it tomorrow. Y yes sir All at once, the students gathered to pass in their deposits. Here's mine. All right, Watson. Got it. And this is mine. Th thank you. And this is mine. Thank you! I did not expect such a small thing as handing my bag to cause distraction, but so it did. Miss Whiteley, what sort of bag is that? Hmm? Just the one Pendleton gave me this morning. Woo! It's beautiful! All white and it even has your name stitched at the bottom. Was a white bag rare? Watson spoke at a volume that quickly drew attention, conjuring several new curious onlookers in seconds. I observed and... Ah, yes! Holmes and Watson's bags were both brown. Um, is mine inappropriate? I don't think so. It suits you nicely. Now, if you d don't mind, I'll note your deposit as received. What's the matter, Slater? You look pale. It's nothing. 
I'm in perfect health, really. It was the opposite from my perspective. He was indeed pale, and his eyes were unfocused even when he sat in place. Oh, did you bring your deposits? One moment, let me take down your names. Still, Slater kept to his work, writing down person after person, even as his fingers made to shiver upon every stroke. Careful, Slater. Your fingers are blackened at the tips. Uh, m my mistake. I have a habit of touching the bottom of my pen's holder. That's no good. Look, you've stained your bag. I can't imagine where we're going. May I ask where the sixth form students from last year went? I believe they had a week-long trip to the lakes for some camping and painting. Well, that sounds wonderful. The possibilities are already swimming about my mind. The first bell chimed. It was now time for first period. <laughs>